Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, June 19th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. We've got a gigantic poop plume polluting Southern California beaches, an X-flare, the largest in weeks, and we've got a lot to talk about. We've got severe thunderstorms causing massive power outages in Pennsylvania and Virginia, massive flooding causing road closures in Memphis, and a heat wave. Buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. We've got maps showing the heat wave forecast across much of the U.S. Here's what you want to know. On Thursday, we saw highest temperatures near Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. 102 in Salt Lake, 110 in Las Vegas, 116 in Phoenix. And that's going to shift east tomorrow. 101 in Omaha, 101 in Denver, 100 in Albuquerque. Holy macaroni. And as we enter Saturday, the heat moves a little bit more east, still hot in the central U.S., 102 in Omaha, 91 for Detroit, 92 for Louisville, 94 for Memphis, 97 in Dallas. And it gets worse as the heat moves east. Rally going to be seeing 96 degrees on Sunday. Fun day, Omaha, 100. And as we head into the early work week, it's going to be the east coast picking up the brunt of the heat with the entire East Coast at 90 degrees or higher. And it moderates a little bit on Tuesday, and that is the extent of the heat wave. As you can see, the West cooling off. High temperatures in Bismarck by Tuesday, a balmy 69 degrees. Now, massive flooding causes road closure in Memphis and the Mid-South. WREG crews captured photos of the massive flooding on Interstate 240 under the Jefferson overpass. Take a look at that. And we've got lots of pictures of flooding all in low-lying areas. And let's take a look at the first and earliest major hurricane to hit Mexico ever. Eric makes landfall as a Cat 3 after it intensified to Cat 4. The strongest to hit Mexico so early in the year. Hurricane Eric slammed into to Mexico's Oaxaca state as a dangerous Cat 3 storm Thursday morning, unleashing powerful winds at the coast while spreading heavy rain over the region. The hurricane made landfall 20 miles east of Punta Maldonado just after 6 a.m. CDT Thursday, according to NOAA's National Hurricane Center. Winds of 125 miles per hour were roaring around the center at landfall. The storm came ashore about 100 miles east of Acapulco, the city devastated by Hurricane Otis back in 2023. Eric is the first major hurricane, Cat 3 or greater, on record to hit Mexico before July. The hurricane maxed out as a ferocious Cat 4 storm with 145 mile per hour winds just off the coast hour, uh, in the earliest hours of Thursday morning. Eric is deteriorating now quickly as it tracks through Mexico's steep mountains and should dissipate by Friday. You can see some of the damage here. Holy macaroni. And we can take a quick look over at Tornado HQ for all the live storm warnings, 20 severe weather warnings. These will drop off overnight, but we've got warnings in North Dakota, North Carolina, Virginia, Nebraska, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Say it ain't soda, but that's what's happening. We've got lots of severe weather warnings across the U.S. And this was power outages a few hours ago, looking like over a quarter of a million in Pennsylvania without power, 146,000 plus in Virginia. Let's refresh this. The numbers are getting a little better. Currently in Pennsylvania, 257,000 without power, 133,000 in Virginia, 66,000 plus in Maryland, 61,000 plus in New Jersey, and 50,000 in Cali. It makes you wonder why you don't have backup generators now, doesn't it? And here is the full forecast. Strong to potentially severe thunderstorms with damaging winds are forecast Thursday from parts of New England into the Mid-Atlantic and the Carolinas. Significant heat will expand across the West and the Central Plains through Friday, potentially breaking daily high temperature records. 
Dangerous heat will then build into the eastern U.S. this weekend through much of next week. You can see heat warnings and watches up for the northern plains there and red flag warnings out everywhere in my region. Please keep your cigarette butts inside of the car. And here we are at the GFS model. You'll see those storms move east and out of the way by Saturday. And it's going to be a quite a mild pattern with some high elevation snow moving into the picture here. Uh, it looks like on Saturday and Sunday should be fun day. And by Monday, all that snow is out of the high elevation regions. Let's take a look at this total snowfall. And it's going to be a significant event for the high elevations here Sunday and Monday. Al Gore will not be pleased. We'll also take a look at the total accumulated precipitation to see if there's any flooding threats in the near future. And that's going to be up in those Canadian provinces as well as portions of Mexico here. And later in the month, it will be in the northern tier. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. A little uptick in activity here at the mid-Atlantic Ridge with some... Uh, Activity occurring at depth. Worldwide Volcano News for Thursday, June 19th. Lee Toby still puffing and passing 40,000 foot advisories early this morning. Ducono to 9,000 feet. Chivalouche volcanic ash was not identifiable. Ducono to 9,000 feet. Etna, a new explosive activity occurring today. That has now come to a close. And there was very little uh, photographic evidence of it. I think the weather was kind of poor. Liwotolo, 7,000-foot puff there. Possible volcanic ash from Sungay. Raventador, ongoing ash. Ibu to 6,000 feet. Semadu to 15,000 feet. Etna, explosive activity continuing throughout the day. Ducono to 9,000 feet. Raung on the list, a 16,000-foot blast there. Etna, explosive activity comes to a close. Ibu on the list. Etna, eruption stopped at 1217 Liwotolo to 7,000 feet. We've got Semadu, who knew, now you do. 15,000-foot blast today, wrapping up Worldwide Volcano News for the day. Hey, hey. And have you heard a SpaceX rocket exploded on the tarmac in a new setback to Elon Musk's major Mars project? There you can see the boom, indeed, a big boom. It's actually a double boom. There was an initial boom at the top, and then everything else blew up. Now, how much did this explosion cost? Well, it's anyone's guess. It was quite spectacular. I believe we have a different view here. You can see the initial blast up high. What's going on there? Well, holy macaroni. Elon Musk, probably not that happy. Boom! A boom, indeed. Starship 36 was preparing for the 10th test flight from Texas when it underwent a catastrophic failure while it was on the stand. One of Elon Musk's SpaceX Starships has exploded during a routine test in Texas, authorities said. The good news is that there were no employees within the danger zone of that rocket. So there were no injuries, but certainly a huge setback. Now, we might have northern lights visible in nine states tonight or tomorrow night. We're just waiting for the telemetry to kick in. Here is tonight's aurora forecast, and you can see the northern tier states may be picking up a show. Well, and that's all care to some minor geomagnetic activity earlier this week, sending a small coronal mass ejection in the form of a plasma filament and a small CME headed towards Earth. You'll see the fir first one leave here, back on the 18th, and a second one following right behind it. So not a lot of plasma heading our way. But I do digress. Let's take a quick look at telemetry. You can see KP is currently at 3. Here we are over at Discover Solar Wind. You can see the BZ is up to the north, just keeping that KP low. Density is leveled off, plasma speed hovering at around 500, nothing happening. What we would be aiming to see is a jump in all telemetry any time now to send us into geomagnetic storm. It'll be low-level G1, but we did just have another 
impulsive X flare and an X flare that was quite spectacular, an X 1.91. An impulsive flare from active region 4114, which gave us our last X flare. And this one doesn't appear to uh, be producing another coronal mass ejection either. So the sun is active, but getting quiet as we drop down into solar minimum. Now let's talk about the Mexican sewage flooding into California. It can be seen from space and it's closing beaches. We showed you the plume of Mexican wastewater. Here is the U.S.-Mexican border. Here is the Tijuana River estuary. And Imperial Beach has been closed as well as from the Boca Rio spectro radiometer. You can see the wastewater plume. This is poop and other toxic crap that Mexico just pumps right into the river. How do you like them apples? A 12-ton monument of Assyrian deities was found beneath an ancient palace in Iraq, and the discovery is fascinating. Look how deep they're digging here. Yeah. Tens of feet of soil covering this site, which dates back 2,600 years ago, or even further, the 8th century B.C. And you can see the typical Assyrian gods on the motif here. Absolutely fantastic. All the links will be below. And more research coming out from those footprints in White Sands in New Mexico. A new research paper strengthens the case for the age of the ancient New Mexico footprints. A lot of people have been saying that the 23,000-year-old age isn't correct. It has to do with reworking of sediments and bad dating. But this one did an excellent job at looking at some of the carbon material directly laid within the footprints, which probably happened shortly after they were made. And, well, the new dates date to 20,700 to 22,400, making this potentially, well, one of the oldest human footprint sites in the Americas. And, well, also killing the Clovis first hypothesis once and for all. Let's put another nail in the coffin. And speaking of nail in the coffin, is World War III imminent? No one knows. Will there be a black swan event where they shut down the internet and maybe cause an EMP and there's a long-term blackout? Well, My Patriot Supply having a 4th of July sale is a great way to get into preparedness food. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 and your freedom. Four-week food supply plus four free 72-hour food kits. Holy macaroni. Claim your deals now and shop the sale over at, well... Prepare with the ranch.com and my Patriot Supply. Links will be below to our affiliate page where you can get the deepest discounts over the 4th of July. Look at this package the Ember Off Grid Biomass Oven Ultimate Kit by Instafire. You don't need gas, you don't need electricity. You can get your own oven for $320. Bucks. It's $100 off. And the sales galore are everywhere. A protein booster case. Just 115, that's 168 total servings. That's less than a buck a meal. You can't beat it. Check out My Patriot Su- Supply, trusted self reliance. Support the channel, support your preparedness. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please hit the thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to the channel now. Over half of the people viewing the video are unsubscribed, and we need your help to grow. We're trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the year. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom.